Hi, Matt Perhodiff with On His Path, and we're excited that you're here today. We're hosting Anita Schwarzenduber from Whalen, who brings a special guest, Paul Chintata, from Eastern India. Tell me the city. Vijayanagaram. As you said. <laughs> I'm not going to try to spell that. So we're excited that you're here. You've um, had an association with Anita for some time, and you're with Philadelphia Missions, which sounds like it's from Philadelphia, but you tell me not. Yes. Tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, and maybe a little bit about your ministry. Yeah, I am Paul Chintada from India. I was born and raised a Hindu, uh, an animistic family. Animism is a belief that believe in the spirits. Mm -hmm. Everything is a, a God for them. So I was raised uh, when I was a young boy, worshiping these idols and worshiping the spirits. And still I remember my parents teaching me, you know, all the patterns of idol worshiping and worshiping the spirits. But when I was uh, growing young, um, a missionary came to our village and preached about the gospel. But I rejected very badly and said, we have so many gods, and why you want to have another god from a foreign country? Mm. And during that time, I felt very sad about him. But he keep on coming and sharing the gospel with me. After a few weeks, I had a vision of a man crucified and I do not know, have any idea who he was. And then I found out he's Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and who died for my sins, and I became a Christian. And also I became an active member in the church, helping my pastor and helping others. During that time, God laid my, in my heart to reach these people with the gospel. They are perishing up in the mountains. Nobody goes there. And God prepared me and is calling me to go there. Mm -hmm. So I went to a seminary, mm -hmm. got my education, theology, and I equipped myself for the ministry, came back, and God laid in my heart to reach these people communities. During that time, I met my wife Padma, and she's a great help in the ministry. And God blessed it with two children, a girl and boy, we are bringing them in a Christian discipline. Mm. We also found a handful of people with us to work for Philadelphia Mission. Mm. Philadelphia Mission is a church planting ministry reaching most unreached people groups of India. Through Philadelphia Missions, we are planting churches, discipling and, and baptizing and re preaching the gospel. And that is how God is working with us. And in, within the span of uh, 14 years, we could be able to plant 50 church plants and 28 full-time pastors are working with us for the same cause. Praise God. That's amazing. 14 years, 50 church plants, unreached people groups. Mm -hmm. And you were telling us that um, to go into a community that has never heard the gospel, has no written language, mm -hmm. it takes how long before you can make that initial visit, ultimately build relationship, and then start you know, presenting the gospel. How long does that typically take? Yeah, it is really a hard time going there. It's not so easy. We just uh, uh, strate strategically, you know, we uh, prepare before we go there. Mm -hmm. So when we go, we go up to the foot of the mountain, and then from there we walk three hours or four hours to reach those mountain villages. And uh, we carefully find somebody who speak our dialect and their dialect because mm -hmm. most of these uh, tribal communities, they have their own dialects. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think every 10 miles, the dialect changes. Wow. <laughs> and, um, and that is why we find uh, somebody who can uh, know our tongue and bring them there. And we stress strategically uh, meet the elder of the tribe or the village head and we make friendship with them and we keep on going again and again and again and again. When they are ready to listen the gospel, we will speak the gospel to them, share the love of Jesus and also 
talk about the faith in God, in the God of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And slowly, slowly, uh, we bring them into Christian faith. It will take like a, 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 like a year or more uh, to bring those people into Christianity or Christian faith. And uh, recently, in, a, in four years ago, we went to a village, which is far away from us, middle of the mountains. 60 families are living there. When we en went there, the villagers are appreciating because nobody goes that it is us. We went there for the first time. And slowly, slowly, they were responding to us positively. And uh, all the 60 families turn to the Lord now. And we have a church plant in that small village, in that mountain village. Mm -hmm. And we are praising God for everything, what God is doing through us. Praise God. Okay, so Anita, I'm going to draw you into this. So how does Wayland, Iowa, and Anita Schwarzenegger get connected <laughs> with, you know, Eastern India? I love going on mission trips. Oh, there you go. My first mission trip was with the globe to Russia, and then um, l lots of trips to Mexico and Nicaragua yeah. and uh, China. And then the group from Mexico took me with them, a couple of my friends and I, to India, a new place. Paul became our translator. He was then a Bible college student. Oh, I see. I and see. He was assigned yeah. to the three of us to yeah. take us to little churches, and we would have worship and sing and preach, and I would draw uh, prophetic pictures and... Uh, it was a great time. That was that we pushed in 15 years, isn't oh, it? Oh, in 2000 we first know that. went. Yeah. A couple times to, and he was our translator. Then in 2005 he had his ministry going, and invited us there. You still are a very good translator, I'm sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many languages do you know? I speak Telugu. That is my mother tongue. That's right. And I also speak English. Yes. What you hear now. Yeah. Right. And uh, I speak a uh, little Hindi and little Wodiya. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. You were teaching a little Wodiya earlier. Oh, yes. <laughs> not, we didn't do very well. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking earlier about the healing ministry that seems so powerful. Yeah. Um, as part of your ministry and maybe. Yeah, some most centers. of these uh, tribal communities, they do not know what is a medical assistance and mm -hmm. they never uh, able to reach the, you know, doctors or hospitals nearby. Yeah. And mostly uh, 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 the way they expect is our prayers. Mm -hmm. So we pray and they were healed. You know, that is just we have faith in God and trust in God. And that is how these people are very much uh, uh, attracted to God who heals them. Mm -hmm. So you told one story where you had been <clears throat> going to a new people group yeah. and you just gone there and you had all sat down and one young boy was sitting yeah. on a rock and he was um, addressed yeah. by an elder from that community. Tell us about that. It's not uh, very easy to go to these communities because they are very aggressive. Mm -hmm. If they found that we are uh, something harmful to them, they will react very badly upon us and they don't even mind to kill us. Mm -hmm. So once uh, we have a mission trip to this tribal community, and preaching the gospel. And it was a lunch hour, so we sat uh, uh, in a place where we have a, a tree shade and uh, eating our lunch. One of our boy, young man, he sat on a piece of rock. And uh, uh, we have seen a man from that village coming uh, with a, 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 an ax on his ax. hand. Yeah and wants to kill this young boy, and we have no idea why he wants to do that. And we ask him, please pardon us and let us know what, what's wrong with us. And he explained, you know, this young man, you sat on that rock, and that rock is our God. You are humiliating by doing that. And we are apologized to him, you know, because we do not know that, and uh, that aggressive they are. So it can be dangerous if you don't understand their culture and their 
right. you know, religion and uh, their gods, and you know, it would be very dangerous sometimes. Tell us a little bit about the culture of India, you know, in terms of, you know, the, the rate of Christianity, Hindu, Muslims, what's the make makeup of India? Yeah, India is a mosaic, you know, there are so many religions and basically we have Hinduism is a, a, a predominant uh, religion we have. They say like 80% of uh, Hinduism in India and 12% of uh, Muslims in India and also like 3% of Christianity and other religions. But according to the church growth survey uh, of Chennai or some other private survey, we have like um, 10 to 12 percent of Christianity in India because most of the Christians are secret Christians in India. That's right. Yeah. They go to church, but they do not want to identify them as uh, Christians. Mm -hmm. And they feed their families and they feed the government or the people and the public and the society. So therefore, uh, they want to, you know, secret Christians hide themselves not being identifying as Christians. So there might be a possibility of uh, 10 to 12 percent of Christianity in India uh, un, uh, unrecorded. It's, yeah. it's not on records. But still 98, you know, 80, 90 percent were non-Christians, you know, yeah. Hindus. So Hindus, they want to establish, the, you know, Hindutva philosophy and Hinduism back in India. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they, that is why they are more aggressive Yes. Very, very much aggressive. But the Christians did a great things to India, you know. Yeah. For the nation building. Most of the schools and, you know, they have a hospital schools and, you know, they're doing very good part to contribute uh, uh, for the nation building in India. But uh, this uh, uh, fundamental Hindus, they do not understand that. And uh, in response to that, they are trying to persecute uh, uh, Christians in a more, uh, you know, yeah. different way. Yeah. Mm. It's amazing the work you're doing, brother. Yeah. And uh, Anita, just fun to have you bring him yeah. and visit. <laughs> and it's amazing how God works. Yeah. It's a miracle that, yes. you, that you have connected. Yeah, and... that's what I always use. You know, God is connected us all the way around the globe and on the other side of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that, you know. It's the great connection. And it's God's plan and there is no limits for him. The only thing that we need is to trust him just like a child trusts his father. That's right. So we had just talked earlier about um, how that all comes together in Romans 8, 28. And I wondered if you could take your Bible and read yeah. for us that <laughs> special passage. Yeah, this is uh, one of my favorite passages uh, from the Bible, Romans, you know, chapter 8, verse uh, 28 and uh, 29. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many others. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Praise God. What a beautiful wow. scripture it is. Wow. <laughs> and he predestined, he called, and he justified, he glorified. glorified. He predestined this shepherd boy yeah. in the mountains in, East, in eastern India uh, and selected yeah. your village yeah. as one yeah. to send a missionary yes. of all the thousands of villages that were unreached that yeah. he could have went to. I have so many of my friends and uh, appreciating me and admiring me. And I want to be a, you know, uh, have a, my own choice of career. But uh, they now appreciating, you see, you're going to the, to the many countries and, you know, mm -hmm. talking to the people, encouraging brothers, you know. That's a ministry that God has given you. We do not have that privilege. And I said, when you honor God, God will honor you. That's right. Amen. That's yeah. right. right. That's beautiful. Yeah. I told him earlier that I think he's a Colossians 128 guy. Yes. Him we proclaim. Yes. Teaching and admonishing. Yes. All to become mature in Christ Jesus. And yes. so, 
you're doing just that message out of Colossians, so I appreciate that Yeah, so and uh, 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 the important point I like that is I worked that which is worketh in me. Mm -hmm. That's what Apostle Paul says. Yeah. I'm not working. I mean, the criteria for my work is not from outside. The criteria for my work is not something I have seen. But God is something working in me so that I'm working. Praise God. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you for this time. This is a, just a precious time, and yeah. just, uh, it's always fun to be with my brothers that um, are doing the great work all yeah. over the world. Yeah. So I appreciate that, and thank you for joining us on Honest Path, and we just look forward to doing this again, but um, come with us with Honest Path. Thanks. <laughs>